Hi, I'm Danielle Cook. I am the mom of a cancer survivor and I run a nutrition program called Happily Hungry that works with families and children undergoing cancer treatment. And I'm also the author of Happily Hungry, Smart Recipes for Kids with Cancer. When my son was diagnosed with cancer 10 years ago, the one thing that I really felt that I could do for him was feed him. This experience sent me back to school to get a master's in holistic nutrition so I could better understand the science behind the foods. Happily Hungry is um, an amazing program that helps not only our patients but our patients' families as well. Um, Danielle Cook does an amazing job and having gone through the whole um, cancer treatment thing herself with her son, um, it gives her a unique perspective on how families feel, what they go through. Initially when, when the child first gets, gets diagnosed, they're just astounded and then we throw so much medical information at them and they really are just so overwhelmed. But Danielle gives them something that they can actually do and that gives them a little bit of control back. Here are five tips to help you manage the nutrition piece as you go through your cancer journey. Tip number one, make every bite count. We have a bowl of potato chips and we have a bowl of mixed nuts. Calorie for calorie, they might be quite similar in terms of how many calories in each, but in terms of nutrition, they're gonna be vastly different. What you're gonna get out of a nice handful of mixed nuts are gonna be good fats, good protein, it'll make you feel fuller, longer, really deliver a good punch of good nutrition. Unfortunately, from a bowl of chips, you're just not gonna get that. Tip two, foods can be your medicine. Side effects to cancer treatment can include things like nausea, and loss of appetite, change in taste buds, constipation, uh, diarrhea. So all of these side effects can be mitigated with certain foods like ginger can help with nausea, um, peppermint, lemon, limes. These are all good for settling the stomach. Um, that overall blah feeling of fatigue can be mitigated by having good quality proteins in your diet. Fermented foods and beverages are also really very, very helpful to settle stomach. Um, things like kefir or a kombucha, which is a fermented tea. Perhaps one of the best foods to include across the board are going to be foods that are high in antioxidants. So all of your berries, your deep colored fruits and vegetables, very high in vitamin C and antioxidants. Those are real powerhouse ingredients that can really go a long way to making a patient feel better. Tip three, manage the no appetite or huge appetite. With the loss of appetite, you can manage that with some really great spices like cinnamon and hot pepper flakes that often can stimulate an appetite as well as ginger. Um, with a huge appetite, you need to look at managing the salt cravings. So things like miso can really satisfy that salt craving. This is a wonderful addition into homemade chicken broth. But it's a natural fermentation, so it's got a lot of good probiotic benefits. Look for filling the cravings of carbohydrates with healthy foods like baked potatoes and oven roasted sweet potatoes. Smoothies are a great way of getting good nutrition into the kids. So when you think about a smoothie, you think about a shake, and people usually go to thinking sherbet and ice cream. And we do away with that by replacing those ingredients with really good nutrition. Sometimes we use silken tofu, which purees up really nicely in the blender. It takes on the flavor of whatever the berries are that you've got in your smoothie. Um, so you don't get a real kind of soy flavor, but you get great protein from this. We also use a fair amount of Greek yogurt or whole milk plain yogurt. The other thing we like to use are nut butters, which are really, really good, uh, full of good proteins and fats and good calories. Then in terms of the liquid, if we're not using 100% juice, really good juices, um, we'll use 
often nut milk, so almond milk. Um, we also use soy milk. We we'll use um, work with uh, rice milks. Uh, this is a newfound favorite. This is a quinoa milk that is vanilla sweetened with agave, so not sugar sweetened, but agave nectar, which we use uh, to sweeten. Um, also very light, easy to digest, and of course, quinoa is a great source of protein. It is a grain, it's actually a seed, but it's got excellent protein sources. And then on the sweets, in terms of amping up sweet flavor, we work with maple syrup and honey, and I, in addition to the agave. Tip number four, choose healthy food choices while you're on the go. So we're gonna work on a really simple recipe here, um, our crustless popovers. It's a great take-along food when you're sitting waiting for appointments. It's got a lot of good nutrition in it. It's very kid-friendly and adult-friendly. Um, and it comes together real fast. So I've started here, I've got some plain yogurt and an egg. We're gonna add two more eggs for a total of three eggs. We'll get that whisked up. And to this, we're gonna add a tablespoon of melted butter and two thirds of a cup of half and half or heavy cream, your choice. To this, we're gonna add a little bit of flour, about two thirds of a cup of, and I'm using a, uh, an unbleached organic flour. You could also use an oat flour. Just a little bit to give it kind of a thick batter. Now, once these are cooked, you can store them in the fridge for the better part of four or five days if they last that long. We're gonna go ahead and put about four ounces of shredded mild cheddar cheese. And then you're gonna want a couple tablespoons of fresh minced herbs and your choice here. I've got a combination of parsley and fresh basil, but you could use chives, you could use, um, you could use dill, you could use whatever really you have on hand. These will all be cooked so you don't have any issues for, um, in terms of neutropenia, which can be an issue for some of the patients. A little bit of sea salt. And this batter will make about a dozen popovers. Okay, let's take a look and see. Ooh, these look great. Perfectly golden brown. Nicely puffed up. There are our crustless popovers. So muffins are a great way of also having a good healthy filler food while you're on the go. The kids love them, they're carrot coconut muffins, so they have walnuts, they have carrots in them, uh, they have a couple different interesting flours and oat flour, moving away from the, the white flours in our, in our baking. Um, it's got coconut obviously and um, a little bit of raisins, just packed full of flavor, some cinnamon and cloves and other things. These muffins freeze well, so you can uh, have somebody bake you up a dozen and, and you can keep them in the freezer, grab them when you're on your way out. Uh, it's a great filler food. Tip five, engage your support system. Family and friends and neighbors in your community are going to want to help you during this time of crisis. So let them, let them cook for you. That is certainly one way that they can participate in feeling that they're helping. Helpful broths, soups, ready to go pasta sauces, casseroles, even pestos. These are all things that people can certainly help you with, bring to your home and just deliver real nutritious foods to your home.